Hello everybody and welcome back to Firefield Junction. Um, apologies that it's been a while since I've uploaded a video. Um, I've just been quite busy with, with uh, other stuff uh, in general. But we're back, we're finally, finally here with another video. And as we can see, we've got another loco for us today. Uh, as, as you can probably tell, today we've got a Hornby Class 59 in the Yeoman livery. Now it is a railroad model, so obviously we know it's not going to be the best quality. However, even the Hornby's railroad models, they can be very good, and most of the time they usually are quite good. Obviously, the detail obviously isn't the best, however, you usually get good performance out of them, and they are usually very, very good. Uh, this particular one is 59004, as we can see there. I hope you can see that. It is named. Uh, it's the, there we go, there we go. it's uh, Paul A. Ye Yeoman Hammonds there. So, sorry, it's not Yeoman, it's the Yeoman livery. <laughs> but yeah, the name is Paul A. Hammonds. Uh, this particular one it only arrived today um it is a new model obviously the box as you can probably tell it's not the box isn't in the best condition however the model the model is brand new it's never been used before which is quite nice so obviously today well, she will need running in later when we run her but she is a brand new model and i just couldn't resist her really um, she, um <laughs> i did get her for a bargain price um especially considering she is new but yeah, I got, her, I got her for a bargain price, and she does look very good, and she will be an excellent addition to the layout. And obviously, I don't really, ha I don't really have anything for her to pull yet, um, until I eventually get the new Dapol uh, Yeoman Hoppers. However, can, for the prices there at the moment, I'm not getting those at the moment. But I just couldn't resist really getting the 59s. I don't have a 50. I don't have a 59 yet. I did have one of these in the past, but it was uh, one of the. Um, it was one of the older Hormy models that had the older style packaging, so um, it was similar to this. It was the same livery, I'm pretty sure, but it didn't have them couplings. The couplings were huge. It wasn't the best run in the, in the, in the world, and to, I, to be honest, I just didn't really use it that much, so I sold it a few years ago. However, this being a new model, because this model, this model I believe is fairly new. I believe it's only a few years old, maybe, maybe even less than that, to be honest. But yeah. I just, I just, I just really, I just couldn't resist really getting, getting another, a fifty nine. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I just don't really know what to say to be honest. But yeah, obviously it's a railroad model as we can see. So uh, yeah, as I've mentioned earlier, we know it's not going to be the best detailed model. However, it's probably going to be around the same standard as the Hornby sixty six is, and they are okay. Again, they aren't the best, but they are okay. Obviously, the box isn't the most interesting thing. If we just look at the end. Look at here, the model code is R3666, don't really like triple six, that's not a good sign, but we'll, uh, yeah, we won't mention that. Uh, it's a Yeoman Coco Class 59 and it's Paul A. Hammond's number 59004. DCC ready, that's really good, so that'll be, uh, that be making chipping it really easy. And I will, I'll will i show you how to do that, do that later. Obviously this model, this model is really easy to convert to, D, to DCC. Really easy to get the body off and everything and fit the chip, but I will show you later anyway. Um, after we've run her in, uh, minimum minimum radius four hundred thirty eight millimeters. So basically second radius. Uh, you don't really see first radius these days, and to be honest, first radius just won't even bother with it. It's way too tight. But yeah, nothing that interesting on the box. So um, really, so I think next thing to do is just open her, open her up, and have a look. Now I haven't had her out of the box yet, so I really don't really know. Well, I do kind of know what she's going to be like, but. Not, not massive. Not. I don't really have a lot, a massive amount of experience with the 59s. If we can get the instructions out because they really don't want to come. There we go. So we just put the box to one side and we'll have a look at the instructions quickly. So class 59 slash class 66. Yes. So the class 59, obviously, it's uh, the the class 66 came from the class 59, as they are pretty much the ident. I. <laughs> they do have the same body shell. So the Class 59 came around in, I think, 1986 it was, the, the Class 59s came in. Uh, there wasn't many of them, but they were really, 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 really good, very reliable, still going to strong today, and they are very, very nice. And then in 1998, along came the Class 66, it, and they used the same body shell, however, the Class 66 it has different bogeys, a different engine, and a few other different different things as well. So yeah, and obviously in the Hormone model, the, the toolings are fairly similar. Obviously, again, the bogies are different. Obviously, there's going to be differences in some details, but they are quite similar. So the instructions, if you aren't familiar with your locos, um, I do recommend looking through these. They are important. So we've got things like lubrication, where you only need tiny, tiny bits of oil. You really don't need much. They've got details there. That's really, really good. Uh, body removal and DCC ready. 
So it's very useful. Again, I do recommend you look through these. Oh, they are, they can be very, very useful. So if we go back over to the loco, it looks like she has been opened up before, but she definitely, definitely hasn't been around before. So if we look, we look here, we've got some details here. So let's have a look at these. Oh, that's good. So we've got some snow plows there and some various cables and stuff like that. That's quite useful. I might fit the snow, one of the snow plows uh, in the future, but I'll, I'll see about that. And then we've got the loco itself. So the packaging, it's not the best. It's We've definitely seen a lot better. But I suppose it does the job. So if we very, very carefully lift her out. We don't want to damage her. We just put her to one side. And then we can get rid of this. We can put that to one side as well. And here we are. Now, she's not too bad. Obviously, she's not the best uh, detailed uh, loco in the world. But she's not too bad, actually. We've got some okay uh, details. We've got a separately fitted handrail on the front there. And it is only plastic, but it's nice that it's separately fitted. Uh, we don't have any lights. That's uh, that is quite a shame. But you could fit some quite easily, and it's something I may do in the future. I'll see about that. Uh, we can see there on the buff beam there. You can see the various holes where the various details are supposed to go. So I might I might fit those in the future. But obviously, I don't usually fit details to the to locos unless it's maybe a snowplow or something. But, but at least it'll be nice and easy to fit those if I choose to. Here we can see the number there, 59004. The delivery application is really, really good. There's a bit of a stain there. It might just be a bit of what might be oil from the mechanism or something. That seems to come in. There we go, that's coming off quite easily. Uh, the delivery application is really, really good. I do think the UMA delivery, it's fairly basic, but it's quite, it's quite a nice delivery. You can still see it. Um, I'm not sure how many 59s actually still carry this delivery. I know this particular one isn't in the Yeoman livery anymore. 59004 is actually in the Ag Aggregates livery uh, now. Um, I'm very certain about that because I saw her at Westbury around a month ago or so, maybe a bit longer than that, and she was in, and she's in the Aggregates livery now. So this model probably isn't the most up-to-date model, but uh, well, I can't really complain too much. As for mechanism, if we just look, she does only have one driven bogey, and that is uh, as with the and that's well, that's typical of Hornby Class 59s and the Class 66s. So we've got a motor in this in the bogey here, and it is just this axle and this axle that are driven. And as we can see there and there, we do have traction tyres, which isn't great. So we don't like traction tyres, and I know I've mentioned that quite a lot, but might as well mention it again. <laughs> Can't mention it too many times. Yeah, we don't like traction tyres. They're not great. They perish over time, and on a lot of and on a lot of locos, it can be quite annoying uh, to um, yeah to uh, repair them and uh, fit new ones. And something I have just noticed actually is one of the pickups in there. You can see, you can just see in there that pickup there. That pickup has come out of place on that bogey, so that's something I'm going to have to repair uh, later on. That's not great. Don't really like doing that to new models very well. Uh, the other pickups look to be okay. I can't see anything wrong with those. If we just check check them to make sure they're all okay. Yeah, all the other pickups seem to be okay. Uh, that one pickup being like that, it shouldn't affect the performance massively, but still, I'll still repair it anyway just to make sure. Obviously, detail. Well, it is there. Obviously, it's a lot of it is just moulded, like a lot of the pipes here. Actually, I think they, no, those no those pipes are actually separately fit. Actually, they are separately fitted. Actually, that's a. That's quite a surprise. I was expecting those to be moulded, but they are actually separately fitted uh, by the looks of it. Uh, bogey detail, it's okay, it's basic, but it is there. Uh, it would be nice if they hid the pickups um, a bit better, actually, because you can see them quite quite easily. But I suppose if you wanted to, you could just paint over them with some black paint or something. Uh, the dummy bogey is okay. Obviously, it well, probably turns a bit too much, but it's okay. You can see we've got some detail there. We've got sandpipe detail. Uh, the bogey detail is okay, it's basic, but it's there. We've got some steps there, which I think are separately fitted. Uh, cab detail, well, yeah, there's barely any there. It is there, but again, it's unpainted. But obviously, being a railroad model, you kind of expect that. The roof itself is fairly bland. Um, I believe the exhaust detail, though, is separately fitted. It usually is on a lot of other models like this. So that's that, that's okay. And well, yeah. Overall, she is okay. Obviously, she is quite basic. She's it is quite a fairly bog standard loco. 
but she, she isn't too bad. Oh, she has got NEM couplings. Uh, before I forget to mention that, she does have my NEM couplings, and that's good. And I will probably change one of them to a KD uh, in the future. But uh, yeah, that's not too bad. But yeah, overall, she's not a bad model. But she obviously she's not the greatest model in the world, but overall she's not too bad. She is okay, especially for the price I paid for her. She is very very good. She's definitely worth it. And as for the weight, it's okay. Uh, she's not dreadfully heavy, but she's not dreadfully light either. So she should she should stand a good chance of uh, pulling some decent uh, a decent rake of wagons. And overall, she's not too bad really. So the next thing to do will be to put her on the track and see how she runs. But obviously, obviously before I do that, before we do that, I will obviously have to fix that pickup. But that should be fairly easy to do. And once I've done that, we'll put her on the track and we'll get her running in. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, hello, hello everybody, um, and welcome back to the layout. Um, as you can see, it's actually a few days later now uh, since we actually looked at the model, and there and there is a very good reason for that. Basically, the reason it's now actually a few days since we looked at the model, and that we're only just getting round to actually putting the loco onto the track, is because I actually had an issue with the model that you've actually just seen. Basically, this is not the model that you've just seen um, that we've just looked at in detail. This is actually a replacement uh, model. Um, I say a replacement, it's well, more of a new one because I didn't actually get this from the same person. Basically, the first Class 59 that I bought, um, this is, by the, and by the way, this is exactly the same model, by the way, so we don't, um, we don't need to look at this one in detail because this is the exact, exact same model, same detail, same mechanism, basic, everything is exactly the same. It's just a different example. Basically, the first model that I had of this, I couldn't get the body shell off. For whatever reason, the, the body shell just did not want to come off. It didn't matter what I did, the body shell just wasn't coming off. It really, just, it really, really just wasn't having any, any of it, basically. The only way I would have basically gotten the body shell off is I would have had to break something, and that's I really didn't want to do that since it was a brand new model. So, for whatever reason, the body shell just didn't want to come off. Um, it was basically... Even though I disengaged the all of the body clips, the ends here and here underneath the cab at the front, they really just didn't want to come off. I basically the only th reason I can think of that for happening is I did do some research online. Some people said that there were extra clips underneath the cab ends. Um, I don't know whether that's true or not. Maybe it's just on on select on select Hornby Class Fifty Nines. This one do doesn't have the ca um, any clips underneath the ends. Um, I'll show you later when we take the body shell off to fit a chip. There definitely aren't any clips underneath the cab windows on the ends. So the only reason I can think that, bo that the body shell uh, just didn't want, want to come off is I reckon is that the glue that holds the cab glazing in place. Basically, I, re I have a feeling that maybe during manufacturing, somehow some of that glue maybe hadn't dried fully. And when the body shell was put onto the chassis, the glue has dried and maybe and basically the body shell has been accidentally glued to the chassis during during production at the factory that is the only logical reason i can think of the, for this happening because the model was brand new it had never been ran before <laughs> so that's the only logical reason i can think that the body shell didn't want to come off so i sent that model back and i managed to buy a new one this particular one is a pre-owned example from from rails of sheffield so this one isn't brand new however that shouldn't matter too much. Obviously, it's still the exact same mechanism and everything. Um, I have just given all of the wheels a clean because the wheels were absolutely filthy. So I have given them a clean. I've given the model a quick a quick rock back and forth, and she does seem to be okay. Um, she may need some oil. I don't know how long it's been since this particular example has run, but hopefully, after a bit of running in, because she I am going to run her in still. Hopefully, after a bit of running in, any oil that is still on the mechanism, and hopefully, there's enough. Hopefully that will get worked around all the gears and everything and she should be fine. So yeah, I thought I'd just clarify that. That's why it's um, a few days later since we looked at the Class 59, class 59 in detail. Well, here we are, we're finally on the layout, at the layout. So if we just put the loco on and finally, after all this time, we can actually see how this particular model actually runs. So it's quite a lot of wheels to get on. It looks like they're all on, that should be fine if we just check. Yeah, they all look to be okay. There we go. 
Now she is still DC at the moment. I will show you how to fit, fit a chip to her later once she's run in, but she's still on DC at the moment. Uh, so if we just give her a bit of a wiggle to see what she's like. Wow, that's really smooth actually, just a bit faster. Well, that's really good actually. I believe these models do only have three pole motors, so that's really, really good. And there's no flywheels or anything, so she hasn't got an awful lot of, a lot of momentum to carry her. But considering this model is pre-owned and she hasn't ran in a long time, <laughs> that's very, very good. But she still does need running in. So we'll give her about 20 minutes in each direction, get her warmed up, get some oil around the, all of the working parts. And then we'll come back later and we'll fit a chip to her. So let's get her running in. Okay everybody, here we are, she's finished running in and she's now ready to have a DCC chip fitted to her. And um, obviously, like most of my locos, um, I'm sure I've mentioned this in other videos before, obviously this loco will be receiving sound at some point in the future. As for when, I, I, obviously, I honestly can't say, but obviously it will be receiving sound in the future. But obviously at the moment, I obviously, well, at the moment I, just, I can't afford a DCC, a DCC sound chip for her at the moment. So she'll have a regular decoder in her at the moment, and obviously I'm sure this is probably what most people will, will be using um, if they do fit this model with DCC. Uh, they'll probably mo most likely just be using a regular chip for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the most part. Um, since, obviously, I, since I obviously mainly use sound in my locos, I tend to not usually buy in incredibly high quality um, regular decoders. Sometimes I do, obviously I do sometimes buy um, I do have some lens decoders. I also one of my models has a Zimo decoder in it. But I tend to usually, um, if I do buy regular decoders, which rarely happens, I don't always spend an awful lot of money on them. And most of the time, I don't buy uh, regular decoders anyway because usually a model will just get fitted with a regular decoder, and my regular deco decoders tend to just pass between from loco to loco as time goes on. But anyway, for the moment, she's just going to have a regular Hornby decoder in her. Um, I know these aren't great. Uh, um, I tend to not like them an awful lot. However, at least they do the job. At least the model runs on DCC. Obviously, it's not the most smooth uh, decoder at low speeds. They are quite jerky. However, in some models, they can be okay. I know in models like this, they're not absolutely superb. But at least it will do the job and it will be good for however long this chip's in, in the Loco 4. And obviously, the Class 59 by Hornby nice and easy to open up it's just uh, several clips on each side there are none un underneath the cab ends i have been told by some people that on it's on loco such as hornby's gbrf class 59 which is 59003 some people have told me that theirs have clips underneath the cabs at the ends i obviously can't comment on that because i don't have 59003 at the moment um i will be getting her in the future but i don't have her at the moment on these particular ones though it's just clips on the side and it's nice and easy to do if you just gently prise the body away it should nice and easily come off and once we've just engaged enough of them the body should come off fairly easily it's not playing ball at the moment but there we go and there we are the body comes off nice and easily so if you put that to one side we can now see what she's like inside so we've got the motor bogey at this end we've then got the relevant wires coming from both bogeys and then we've got our nice typical 8 pin DCC socket there. So the 8 pin socket should come out fairly easily. There we go. And then the next thing to do is we can take the chip and we then need to plug the orange wire into pin one. Now it doesn't seem to be actually be marked on this particular on this particular one. But it should be fairly easy to look at. So if we just look un underneath the 8 pin socket, actually, we can just look where each of the wires goes to usually on these models there is a little arrow uh, next to the pin that pin the socket one goes into 
and it looks like actually I think I have to find out which one it is. I think it's actually this one here. I think the arrow has just been chopped off a bit it's where the screw goes in. So the chip goes in this way round by those bits. So if we just line that up and push it in. There we go. And then if we just grab a double sided sticky pad. We can then fix the chip nice and easily into the chassis. We just peel the backing of the sticky pad off. It doesn't want to, there we go. Put that to one side. And then we can just take the chip and then secure it nicely into the chassis. Just tuck the wires in and there we go. She's now chipped. Nice and easy to do. Obviously some people might find something like this quite daunting. Obviously, when I first chipped Loco, it was quite daunting for me. Um, it didn't go very well. But obviously, once you've done a few Locos, and I've obviously done many Locos now, once you've done a few Locos, over time, it does get easier. <laughs> Especially with Locos as simple as this, where the body comes off nice and easily. It's nice and easy for the chip. And it's literally done in, in less than a minute. Nice and easy to do. So we can now put the body back on. It should go back on nice and easily. This one doesn't seem to go want, want to go back on very easily. We might just need to pry the body out a bit. There we go. And there we are. All the clips go back in. And there we go. The chip's now fitted. We've obviously got this, the 8-pin plug. That was going to my spares. And all that's left to do now is to do the relevant programming. So I'll give her an address. I might tweak a few other CVs. But we'll come back in a moment and we'll see what she's like now that she's DCC fitted. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, here we are. Uh, she obviously she's had her chip fitted as, as we've just seen uh, she's all been programmed she's had her address done um, I haven't changed any of the other CVs because they all seem to be okay uh, I've given her a quick wiggle and she's actually much smoother than what I was expecting her to be um, usually I find locos like this can be quite rough at low speeds with Hornby decoders but she's actually much smoother in that if I just show you let's get her going as slow as she can possibly go give her a bit of power the other direction there we go. Other locos that I've had like this, with this kind of decoder, they'll be, be they'll be really, really rough at the moment. So they'll be almost, there'll be an, a huge amount of cogging um, in the mechanism. But I've never actually seen a loco with this type of mechanism run this smoothly um, at this speed with a Hornby decoder. It's really, really good actually. If we just go the other way and we'll go a little bit faster. It's still not perfect. She does um, groan and uh, she is a little bit rough at uh, some speeds, but she's really not too bad. Now, obviously, I don't really have anything uh, for her to pull at the moment. Um, obviously, I need to get some of the uh, new Yeoman hoppers by Dapol, but to us, I'm not paying the prices that they're charging at the moment for them when I can get other wagons of similar quality by Dapol for much less than that. So I'll wait for a while uh, to see if the prices for those come down before I get some. However, I'm pretty sure now that these Class 59s, I'm pretty sure Freightliner are now operating, are now operating these. Uh, so I have actually got some of the Freightliner hoppers, uh, some of the smaller ones. So I've got seven of those, so I'm gonna hook her up to those. So if I, try, if I actually just bring them round, because it'd be a lot easier. We just bring them round should see them now, there we go. Now I have fitted a KD coupler to uh, this end of the model, so she'll couple to these no problem. And there we go, and she's ready to go. Now hopefully she'll be able to handle all of these. Um, these hoppers are quite are very heavy, but they are solid metal for the most part. However, they are there is, there is actually quite little friction in them, they are very freewheeling. And obviously the model does, has, does have traction tires, obviously she has a traction tire on each uh, driven axle on one of the wheels. So hopefully she should be fine, <laughs> but I suppose the only thing to do really is give her some power and actually see if she can handle all of these. No problems at all by the looks of it. Oh, very good.
but overall, <laughs> I'm impressed. A bargain price. An absolutely amazing logo. <laughs> Obviously her detail isn't the best, but she performs incredibly well. Very well worth the money, definitely. Obviously, obviously, we are we have got Dapol's uh, Class 59s coming out uh, next year, I believe. And obviously, I will be getting one of those. But even though Hornby's 59s, even though they are old Lima, they, these are the old Lima models. They are they are incredibly good, very very good models. Obviously, despite the lack of detail, the character with these models is amazing. And I can't wait to fit some sound to her. <laughs> That'd be amazing. But overall, she's brilliant. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to check out this video. Feel free to give it a like, be sure to leave a comment, and if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.